The Nike ZoomX Invincible Run. The shoe that finally gave us that pure ZoomX experience. It came out with a lot of fanfare, but how will it hold up in the long term? Let's take it for another run and get it to 100 miles. Ten point four eight miles, eight minutes, forty four seconds per mile, and one hundred and forty one beats per minute today on a mostly easy run that got me to the one hundred mile mark in Nike Zumax Invincible Run. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe on a long term basis, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Road Runner Sports and Nike for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video. They don't even know that I'm making this video right now and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Nike ZoomX Invincible Run after 100 miles. First, let's do a quick rundown of the specs on this shoe. Here we've got 36.6 millimeters of stack height in the heel and a 9 millimeter drop giving us 27 0.6 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot and in that midsole is nothing but Zumax foam that miracle foam that so many of us have come to love on the outsole we have full rubber coverage on the outsole to protect that precious Zumax foam also in this shoe and something that I think is probably not talked about nearly enough in the fact that it's a nine millimeter heel drop shoe that also has a rocker up front. It's a very unusual combination. Usually you only see rockers on shoes that have like a four millimeter drop or a five millimeter drop, but on a nine millimeter drop shoe, I think it's highly unusual, but it's what they have here, a rocker at the front, just to help keep you rolling through that gait cycle just a little bit more easily. And in the upper, what we have is what Nike is calling Flyknit, but I don't think it's exactly a Flyknit. If you run in like the Epic React, the Vaporfly 4%, the Infinity Run, you're gonna be feeling something very different in those shoes than what is in this shoe, but it is like a knit type of material that's here on the upper. A lightly padded tongue up top, and then a uh, pretty generous amount of cushioning, or at least puffiness, around the heel collar in the back here. There is also a clip here around the ankle to help with some stability and a little bit of a heel cup here to add some structure. We've got a relatively wide base along the bottom of the shoe as well to help kind of counteract some of the squishiness and the bounciness of this foam, and again, to help aid with that stability. This entire package comes in, at least on the spec sheet that I have, they have a size 10 for US men's listed. That size comes in at 11.07 ounces, and 314 grams for a size nine, which is what I have probably coming in somewhere in the high 10 ounces. So what has it been like to run in this shoe over the course of the last 100 miles. Now, I felt like I had a pretty good read on this shoe from the outset, and a lot of my thoughts on this shoe haven't changed that much at all over the course of the last 100 miles. With that ZoomX foam, you are getting that just miraculous bounciness to it. Uh, just so much spring in each step. It's a very novel kind of feeling, even though I've run in many other shoes with the ZoomX foam in them before. To have it kind of in this configuration, in this kind of like easy day, everyday kind of use of shoe, is a a little bit unique and still is like pretty exciting every time I do get a chance to put this shoe on. I still think that this shoe isn't quite the max cushion shoe that I was really hoping that this could be. Now I've been on longer runs in this shoe before and you can definitely go on those longer runs and your joints are definitely going to feel the benefit of that ZoomX foam but it's not quite like the dreamy experience that I was thinking of. And a big part of that is that this shoe doesn't really like to be kind of chill. It likes to move a little bit faster than easy pace. So a lot of the runs that I did take on this shoe on were on those easy days, but I tried not to use it so much on recovery days, like the day after a tough workout, because I generally found that this shoe just doesn't love running like 
at your slowest paces. I like it on days where there's gonna be easy paces, maybe some moderate paces, maybe a couple of strides in there. That's where I feel like this shoe really works out well for me. Again, it's that springiness, that like unusual, uncanny, like bounciness that you get that's within each stride that you're really feeling every time your foot hits the ground in the shoe. That makes it a very special kind of a shoe to run in. The other thing that I still am feeling very strongly in this shoe is that uh, I tend to like to land a little bit ahead of my arch. Um, sometimes I'm more squarely landing in the forefoot, but at least landing, you know, ahead of the arch just a a little bit and this shoe kind of wants me to lean back a little bit and land more squarely in the midfoot which is a bit of an adjustment for me and at times feels a little bit awkward but when I do that you feel like you're getting a lot more of the bounce and the way that the shoe bounces maybe it's because of that rocker but just the way the shoe bounces I feel like when you get it on the midfoot it just hits the ground just right and so it just starts to throw you into the next part of your gait cycle quite effortlessly. And so I think that's where like this design of this shoe is really intended. I think it's still pretty wobbly if you're landing on the heel. So I don't really think that it's like a heel striker's dream, although there is plenty of cushion back here. I think it really wants you to land like right on that midfoot so that way you could take advantage of that roll and bounce. When I am closer towards the midfoot and on the toes on this shoe, like for example, I did some strides today and when I'm getting up there, the shoe can handle it, but it just doesn't love it. I think there's just a lot of weight that's back here and it makes it feel a little bit unbalanced if you're doing a lot of running right up on your toes. And for some reason, even though there's 27.6 millimeters of Zumex foam in the forefoot, when I'm running and landing on the toes in this shoe, it doesn't feel the best. It's not just my favorite. It just feels like the impact isn't kind of distributing properly and just feels like it's like it's almost like getting a dead spot. I'm not loving it at faster speeds. When I'm at those easy to moderate speeds though, I did have a moderate mile thrown in here today just to kind of reacquaint myself to some a little bit faster speeds in the shoe. I feel like the shoe is really nice and easy to get along with. I think anything from easy to marathon, those are the efforts that the shoe really seems to be enjoying. Now, in terms of maintaining that experience over the last 100 miles, I'm still getting a really nice springy pop from the shoe every time I run in it. So I don't really feel like the shoe's been degrading that much even over the last 100 miles. So feeling very good about that. I know a lot of times when we're thinking about our alpha flies or our next percents, we're usually thinking like 125 miles total for racing. And then after that, you could probably eke out another 75 miles uh, for some training work with it. So maybe you're getting 200 miles out of your racing shoes. I'm not sure what the long-term uh, overall performance of this foam is gonna be, but at the 100 mile mark, I think it's pretty good. It still feels like a very fresh, a very new shoe. It doesn't feel like a 100 mile shoe to me. There is one thing that has developed over time that is becoming something that I'm paying attention to. And I'm not sure if it's just me, it might be something that's going on with my foot. Something that I'm noticing on almost all my runs now is that there's a point somewhere after like the five mile mark where my right toes will start to go, not numb, but they'll start to get like a little bit tingly. And I think what's happening is, I think that there is a bit of an arch in this shoe and that arch is kind of pushing in to my arch. And so it's kind of cutting off circulation a little bit. But there's other times in other shoes where it's much more prominent and the numbness in the toes is also much more prominent. So I'm not sure that's completely what's happening in this shoe. Another thing that I'm also feeling in the shoe relates to the upper in that the upper just isn't very comfortable for me. Not for the kind of like paces that this shoe is really intended for. I feel like it's just a bit too snug, uh, unnecessarily so, and I just feel like my toes are kind of wanting a little bit more room in the forefoot. And so I find that whenever I do feel my toes kind of starting to get that little numbness that's up front, if I focus on spreading out the toes and making sure I'm landing a little bit more flatly, sometimes my foot tends to land in on the side. If I'm making sure I'm landing a little bit more flatly, then after a little while, that kind of sensation tends to go away. But it is something that has come up on multiple times on multiple runs, but it's not something that's preventing me from enjoying the shoe. I'm still gonna keep running in the shoe and overall, I still really do enjoy it. Getting back to the upper though, I've already mentioned some of my dislikes about it in terms of the feeling not that snug. I also don't really like the material that they've chosen. They're calling it flying it. I don't really consider it. It is breathable, it's working fine, but it's just 
it's not as soft as I would like. It's not as comfortable as I would like. I wish they would have put like the Epic React upper on this. I just think that would have been really fantastic. Instead, what we have is something that's knit and puffy and it's a weird combination of materials and colors. And it really just looks like the Nike React Myler to me. In fact, the Nike React Myler 2 just came out and I feel like it's almost the exact same upper on each of these shoes. And I don't like the upper on either of them. And it's not just a looks thing. I don't think that they really work all that well. There's so much better uppers that I've seen from Nike and I feel like they could have just paired a much better upper to the midsole that I am enjoying quite so much. But in terms of it holding up, it's bulletproof. It's fine. It's doing really great. No wear, no tear. I'm not getting any uncomfortable chafing or rubbing or anything like that. So it's fine. It's a little bit too tight in the toes, but other than that, it's holding up really well over the last 100 miles. Now let's get to the outsole in terms of the material that's protecting all this precious ZoomX film that we have in here. Now the outsole pattern is a pretty unique one. I don't think I've really seen something like this from Nike in their, at least in their running shoes before. And what we have is like a lot of very small rubber nubs that are populating the entire kind of like area of this outsole. And we've got a couple of little like smoother like pads of rubber. Now these pads of rubber, I don't, my feet don't usually hit on these two pads. So they probably could have even just left that as exposed Zoomex and it would have been fine because the rubber here is hardly scuffed at all. But where I am seeing a lot of wear on this rubber is in kind of the normal places that I'm seeing it. On this right shoe, it tends to be a little bit more prominent because my right foot kicks out a little bit more than my left foot does. But I've seen quite a bit of wear in this usual spot. And then I'm seeing a little bit of wear right in the balls of the feet, right where the pads are. Um, and so there's a little bit of like the nubs that are on these little um, kind of like mini lugs. There's little nubs on there and those have worn off and a little bit of the tread is starting to wear down. Um, but otherwise everything is pretty good for what I would expect to see on a shoe, on a road shoe after hundred miles. And given how small and kind of like seemingly delicate this pattern is, I do think it's holding up really well. At first I was concerned. I thought it was a pretty brave or maybe even a foolhardy choice in terms of the way they designed that outsole and not giving it something kind of more standard, maybe something more like the Pegasus would have been more appropriate. But uh, this is actually holding up a lot better than I thought it would. So, um, you know, a lot of times I give Nike a hard time about what they're doing on the outsoles, but after I put the miles in them, it usually ends up that they're right and, and they nailed it. I'm going to keep running in this shoe for another couple hundred miles. I'm going to try to get it towards end of life or at least to 300 miles, which for me is normally kind of where I put the end of life on most shoes. So we're going to keep running in it, keep putting in more miles, keep seeing how this Zoomek foam holds up. And overall, I think this is a fantastic shoe that a lot of people are going to be able to use for a majority of their runs. And I think a lot of people, this could be the racer that they pick for their first marathons. I think that for those people who aren't wanting to go or maybe are don't think that they can for some reason bump up to a carbon plated shoe, I feel like the ZoomX Invincible Run is going to be a really appealing option for them to run their marathons in, especially because it's a shoe that's going to be able to handle a lot of the training leading up to that marathon as well. They're not going to have to worry about buying a whole bunch of different other kinds of shoes. It's kind of a do it all shoe for a lot of people that are out there. So overall, pretty impressed with the way that this Nike ZoomX Invincible is holding up. If you have any questions about this shoe, feel free to leave in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you guys about it down there or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. I'd love to be able to chat and interact with you guys live. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?